Hello, this is episode 6 in the Dragon Bone series and today we will start a new little exercise. We'll be working on the next two episodes on setting up and animating a little Viking, a little game character uh, Viking. What Viking? This one right here. There he is in Photoshop, already created, layers. I haven't flattened yet, I will soon. And there's some layers also which are like hidden. Like you can see, like there's a sword now in his hand that will go later on there. But once the sword goes away, we've created, we can swap out the sheath with a full one. And we've created some little eyes that are blinking. Cool. Now, let's go and import these assets into Dragon Bones. I've already prepared a little Viking ready PSD file. I'll just drop it in. You go away, import. And there it is. Everything's in place. Let's just select them on all, move them up. So use the horizontal axis as a reference, like a ground level to help us when we're animating. Um, turn off the root. I'm also going to turn off the, the smart, the intelligence filter. So I just see the images without their extra little folders. Although we will turn it on later on to use it and go straight ahead and start creating a little bone hierarchy, our skeleton system. So we, can animate in the next episode. Let's go straight to create bone and zoom in a bit. And we're gonna start in creating the hip bone. Although this little fella has no hips because it's like a little Lego character, we need, we're gonna create one. So we start from here to here. And while it's selected, we, we create a second bone, which is the body from here all the way all up to the neck. And a third one, you've guessed it, is the head bone. There it is, deselect. Let's go straight down again. We select the hip bone and create the next two bones, which are for each leg. Now, each leg should rotate somewhere here. So there's one like this, deselect, select the hip again, and the other one. Great, deselect. Now we create the bones for the arms. We select the body and start drawing one for each arm, you know, from the shoulder again. Hmm, let me turn the sword off because it's annoying me. There it is. Now I can select and create. There we are. Cool, let's turn the sword back on. And while we selected the sword, let's move it in its proper place. Also, it might need a bit of rotating and moving. Ah, that looks like a good spot. And let's leave it. So, what else do we have to create? We need one bone for the sheath and one for the sword. You'll be asking, why do we need one for the sheath? Well, when we start animating our character, instead of having this asset just being attached to the body and stuck there and moving with it, we're going to create a bone to create a little wobble it. So we give it some weight while it's moving. You can see the sheath bouncing up and down and one for the sword also. So we select the body, go to create bone and its pivot point, if it's attached to the back, should be somewhere here. So there it is, one for the sheath. And now we select the arm that holds the sword and create a bone for the sword to create another little wobble, maybe for somewhere here, here. There we are. Quickly, next step we need to do is go and name everything properly. I do have the habit of um, naming everything to know what is what. So this is the hip. This is the body. This should be leg left. This should be leg right. This should be arm left the other one should be arm right if i spell it yeah okay and the last two should be sheath and sword lovely we've done that now we need to attach the equivalent art asset to each one of the bones you, we can go straight away to select mode and select either each one we want like this. Right click, hit parent, set parent and click on the bone we want to. We can do it for the legs like this or because because we've or because we've named everything properly, I can just go body should go to body. Which bone is this? The head. I haven't renamed it. Ooh. Head. The head and the eyes closed both have to go in the head. The arm right goes to the arm right. The arm left goes to the arm left. The sheath full and empty go to the sheath. And the sword goes.
goes to the sword. That's why I like naming everything because I can just do this right away. And the last step I usually do is always make sure everything works. So I just go to pose mode. I'm going to turn off selectability for images to not, you know, get mixed up. And let's see, does this work? Come on. Yep. Does this work? Good. Does this work here? Come on. Yep. Does this work? Lovely. That's the reason why I put the hip in. I'm, I've, yep. I've got time to explain that. And this works here. This works here. This works here. And this works here. Come on. Good. Now, as you saw, if I didn't, if I had only one bone for the body and also the legs were attached to that, when I would have animated a little bounce in his waist to move, make him rock left and right while he's walking, it would have had also the legs rotating. We don't want that. But by having this hip bone in the middle to be an in between, isolate the legs from the top body, I can, we can animate separately while he's walking, a little wobble like this, and the legs won't move around. That's the great thing of just doing this little thing like this, making sure you understand how hierarchies work. And the last step we need to do before we go to animating is actually putting in proper IKs. Let's go and add them in. So we select this one here, and we'll put an IK like this down here. There we go. Again, one for this one, somewhere down here. Good. One for the arm, IK over here. One for the other arm. Lovely. One for the sword. One for the sheath. One for the head. And for the body, I'm actually going to use IK constraint at the end of the bone right there. Now, of course, I need to scale them up a bit. I'm going to select this one and this one and this one and this one because they're pretty tiny. You can't really see them. Come on, over here. And I'm going to make him like, you know, I don't know, five. I think there's a max you can go anyway. Five and five. Good. And the, and the one here in the middle, can I select it? Yay. No. Can I? It's pretty hard to select this little fella. There it is. Let's make that again for five. Five and five. And again, we're going to have to um, name them if we want to. Because at the end of the day, we're going to turn off the selectability for the images. Like for, it's definitely for the, for the leg. No selectability for the legs. No selectability for the right arm, not for the left arm, not for the head, and not for the body. We might leave the others on because we are actually going to be animating on and off the eyes and the sword and swapping the sheath. The sheath now is a funny thing. I'm going to actually move what, one of the images, the sheath full, onto the sheath empty. Now what we did, we created a little group with both in one because we don't want both of them to be um, visible at the same time. So we create a little team, I'm going to, a little group, and we're going to rename this to sheath set. What this does is I can animate later on in, in, um, in, in the animation side of Dragon Bones, which one of the two will be visible just by doing this here and hitting the little flag here. It says display. See this here? So you always choose which one you want on which keyframe. You hit the, the little flag, it keyframe it, you know, you keyframe it, and in one go, it automatically turns, animates one on and off without having two separate ones to go. Oh, did I turn that one on? I have to turn the other one off. You put it in the same folder and you just choose which one will be visible at any given time. Great. So, um, if anyone wants to go ahead, they can also go, you know, IK everything, you know, properly if they want to. I know it sounds tedious, but it's a good habit into getting into um, naming stuff. It could save you in the future, um, actually, when you come back to a project a week later or a month later, or you pass it on to someone. And when they see everything named, well, they don't have to phone you up and call you, you know, where is everything? Which one do I have to click on? They, it's just like it explains itself. Yes, you might lose more, 10 more minutes while setting it up, but it'll save you time in the future. And while I'm explaining this, you can see me going ahead and 
renaming everything with my bad writing. This one here, I'm also done, almost sheath. And then before I'm done, I'm going to do something. I'm going to make this little character dance, not by animating him, but because we have IKs now, some, we can do some funny things with him. Which one hasn't been? It's this one here in the middle, right? So this is IK um, body. Now, definitely I'm going to turn off all the selectability for the bones now. We don't need them anymore, again, because we're only going to be using the uh, IK controllers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This one and this one. Right. So, look at this. La, 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 la. That looks pretty funny. So you can see now, everything's pretty almost ready. Okay, so I'll, I'll save it later. This is ready. This is ready. This can wobble now. See, imagine him walking, he's going up and down. Also his head wobbling left and right, and his eyes turning off and on, you know, blinking. There we are. Not even 15 minutes into the video, much less, and already we've set up a little Viking. This is how easy it is once you get a hold of the whole setting up your um, your art assets, knowing how to set up bones, quickly at, um, attaching each one to another if you've named everything properly. And the fun will happen now once we go over to the animation. The only thing I've got wrong is already the, um, this sword should not be over his body. So last thing I have to do is create, put the sword there. That's where the sword goes. Actually, you should go No, right arm there, but it should be behind the leg. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this leg and put it there, no, and this leg. Now that's right. That's where it goes. Good. Now we've got everything properly done. So I hope you enjoyed this video because we're going to be moving later on over to the animation side. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating um, five, six or seven, I don't know, um, the walk cycle. So we're going to have a walk cycle, walk, walk cycle without sword, walk cycle with sword, idle with sword, idle without sword, um, arm, unarm, and um, maybe strike. We'll see, we'll see. But it's going to be basically six, I think, animations of 30 frames each, and we'll be doing stuff in 30 frames per second. That's it. So. I hope you enjoyed this little um, video now. I'll be putting in the description a link to this PSD file with the art asset so you can use it yourself and set up your character however you want to. Or you might want to go then into Photoshop or whichever paint package you have and maybe change the colors or add different horns, maybe put, I don't know, put feathers up there or something or change the sword, something more high fantasy, whatever game you like. But I'll be getting this stuff in. You do what you want to. And I hope to see you all in the next video where we animate this little fella. Great. Well, take care, all of you. Bye-bye.